Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all. I hope uh, today everybody is doing good and we will learn good from our today broadcast. I was sent uh, an email from one of you in Facebook. Uh, a Muslim making a video about people taking Quran out of context. So today we are going to show you if really we are taking Quran out of context or not. Uh, and I prefer to do this video and live broadcast so we do not need to load and unload you know it's going to be done one time it's going to be easy and I'm not going to play the Muslim video so they don't play, don't uh, claim copyright over it but the Muslim video is very simple that people they take Quran out of context they don't tell you really what is behind the verse and what the verse is about and he was mentioning chapter 9 verse number 29 so today we are going to show you uh, what really out of context mean in front of us we see uh, a sign which is really a quotation from verse number nine chapter nine sorry which it says that the non-muslims are any clean they are filthy najis therefore they are not allowed to enter the city of mecca now are they the muslim today taking things out of context when they have the sign in the highway imagine if we have a sign like this in new york and the sign says there's roads for muslims and there's road for Christians and Jews. And the reason we give uh, Muslims a special road because they are any clean and they are dirty. Is that being taken out of context? Or this is your Muslim something you practice today and this is something exists right now in Saudi Arabia as we see in the highway of every corner in Saudi Arabia when you are getting close to Mecca or Al Medina. So the propaganda of uh, uh, you know, uh, taking things out of context is very, very funny. And I find it very, very funny too, because the Muslims is the one who take every verse in our Bible out of context. But yet they ask you when you speak about the Quran not to take it out of context. So today we are going to show them that it's not us, the Christians, who take Quran out of context, because we never quote Quran without quoting the interpretation. As long as a scholar he mentioned, or he claimed to be a scholar, chapter 9, verse 29, so I said to myself, and he mentioned too in the in the video, his video, that people they don't show you the interpretation. So I'm going to show you the interpretation. And whatever the interpretation says, I am sure the Muslims should should accept because they are the one who is asking us to accept the interpretation. So we will not take it out of context. Uh, this is the interpretation of Ibn Kathir, and this is the chapter nine, verse number twenty nine. <clears throat> Uh, first of all, the Muslim, he says that, you know what, uh, the war with the non-Muslims, because the non-Muslims, they broke the treaty. They broke the treaty. The fact that chapter 9, verse number 9, verse number 1, is speaking immediately that Allah, he gave a license for the Muslim to break any treaty they have with non-Muslims. So if we go here in verse number 1, you will see, it says it clearly, a declaration of immunity from Allah and his messenger. Declaration of immunity from what? From any contracted manual, um, a mutual alliances you have with those non-Muslims. So it was Allah who gave the Muslims the order to break any, uh, you know, uh, any treaty they have with non-Muslims. Now remember always, the history we read about Islam is written by Muslims. So we don't read the other side of the story. And that will make it unbalanced. Imagine I tell you, imagine you are a police, you come to me, I have a fight with my neighbor. And then you ask me to what happened. I'm not going to tell you really, something will take me to jail. Something will condemn me, especially if I'm the one doing the aggression. I will tell you my own version of the story, so I can make myself look good. And this is exactly what we are talking about. We are talking about religion. All their books is written by them, collected by them, reported by them, and then... Even those books were reported by them, the Muslims, they ran away from it. So now, if this is about people who they are breaking the treaty, the same chapter, what about those? Chapter 9, verse number 29. And verse number 28. All who you believe, pagans are unclean. Pagans are unclean. You see, I'm not showing you a verse, I'm showing you all the verses. Before it, after it, between, whatever, you can read. So anyone is not a Muslim is any clean. What does that mean? What does that mean? 
it's nothing but a fascist practice where we showed you the sign is coming in Mecca is coming from where this is coming from here from the chapter 9 where it says the non-believers are unclean this is why those dirty are not allowed to enter this place for a simple reason they are any clean they are filthy dirty you know the Muslim they used to talk about South Africa system or regime where they used to have buses for the white and buses for the black until now, Islam practiced that, and Islam will practice that forever until Islam is being destroyed. Right now, in Saudi Arabia, they have a sign, as you see, for Muslims, non-Muslims, for non-Muslims are any clean. But yet, they are a human, right? But yet, those are human are unclean. This is why we justify separating them from non-Muslims. And even in Saudi Arabia, if you go there to work in Saudi Arabia, they will give you, uh, uh, like, work uh, a permit, the, if you are a Muslim, they will give you a white book, white permit, which will allow you to enter this highway to go to Mecca. If you are non-Muslim, they will give you a brown one, which is a sign of being a dirty. So non-Muslims, all of them, they have a brown permit, or permit of work, and Muslims, they have white one, for white is the clean and brown is the dirty. So now, are we taking things out of contact to the sea, if this is true or not? We go to the book of... Tafsir, <coughs> and this is Ibn Kathir in front of us, and this is a Muslim website. There's no question about that. Go on, x.com. The verily, the mushrikeen are impure, nudges, filthy, dirty, so they are not allowed to enter the city. And that is the same goes for the Jews and the Christians. And why the Christians and the Jews are dirty? Because the Christians, they say that Jesus is God, and the Jews, they say Uzair is the son of God. So both of them, they have the same problem. Therefore, they are mushrikeen, they are najis, they are not allowed to enter the city of Mecca. And look what the verse in the Quran says. And read, I'm not giving the verse out of context. It is your interpretation. Verily, the mushrikeen is an impure. Atta said, of the sacred mosque, etc., so they cannot enter. So let not come near the Masjid al-Haram. Okay. And now <clears throat> the Muslims, they have a problem. By forbidding non-Muslims from coming to Mecca and to go to al Medina, they fear poverty, as you see with me. And if you fear poverty, Allah will enrich you. Okay, how Allah will enrich you now? Allah will find a solution. How Allah will enrich the Muslims? The Muslims, by stopping the non-Muslims from coming to Mecca, business is dead, business is dying. And the Muslim number is still small to make a business run. So what we can do now? Muhammad had a solution. So if you fear poverty, Allah will enrich you. How? Right away, he says, go and order the Christians and the Jews and order them and force them to pay you jizya. So this war against the Christians and the Jews was not really because you are defending yourself. Those people, they never attack you. It was just to make money and to do a rich the Muslims who they are going to suffer from poverty after you force non-Muslim not to enter Mecca. If we go to the Quran, <coughs> and those are the verses in front of us. As you see, I'm not making things up. Right away after he said that the non-believers are unclean, all right, they are dirty, don't let them get in. And then he says to them, if you fear poverty, soon Allah will reach you. How? Verse number 29 explained. Fight those who believe not in Allah nor the last days, nor hold forbidden what has been forbidden. So what is the problem here? Why would you fight them? Is that, does the verse says fight those who they are fighting you? No. Is speaking about people specifically Christians and Jews and what we will fight them for for the following reasons fight those who don't believe in Allah this is number one reason nor the last day number two no hold what is forbidden by us number three and by Allah messenger and they don't acknowledge the origin of the truth which means they don't accept Islam of the people of the book so none of those reasons is about fight those who fight you. 
And the reason to fight them is connected to the verse before it. So you are not taking things out of context. It says, and if you fear poverty, soon Allah will reach you. How? Make them pages, yeah. So in order to solve the problem by forbidding non-Muslims from going to Kaaba, we go and launch a war against the Christian and we slaughter their men, we steal their money. And after that, we enslave their girls and their women and we sell them as sex slaves. We make a lot of money, we bring their golds. However, even if we want, we can force them to pay jizya and that will make them like a cow who give us milk for free. Every beginning of the month, we go and collect the jizya. You know, the Muslims, by the way, they speak about the jizya. They say it's very little amount. It's very high amount. As an example, a Christian person, he have to pay an average of four golden dinar for every individual. Imagine if you have, at that time, people, they have many kids, like, you know, not like today, you have one child, two child. People, they have 10, 12, etc. So if you have only 10 members in your family, only, that means you have to pay 40 pieces of gold every month. And people at that time, you can buy a camel for a penny, but there's no penny. So the purpose of the war was to make money. Now, we don't want the Muslim to say we are taking things out of context. We go down to the tafsir and see what the tafsir is saying about that. So nobody will claim that I am taking things out of the meaning. So if we go back to Ibn Kathir, we will find the following. I hope the text is clear for you. So we go and fight them, and they will feel themselves subdued, humiliated, etc., and we will take their money. Okay, more interpretation. Fight against those who believe not in Allah in the last day, and who don't acknowledge the origin of the truth, until they pay the jizya, with willing and submission, and feel themselves subdued. Now the interpretation is coming. Therefore, when the people of the scriptures disbelieved in Muhammad, they had no beneficial faith in any messenger or what the messenger brought. Rather, rather they followed their religion because this is confirmed with their ideas, lust, and the way of their forefather. Not because there, there are uh, Allah laws and religion, they ha and uh, had they been true believers in their religion, that faith would have directed them to believe in Muhammad. So if you don't believe in Muhammad, you are false. As simple as that. Because all the prophets gave the good news, Muhammad advanced and commanded them to obey. So Muhammad is commanding the Christians to obey. If the Christians don't want to obey, they don't want to believe in Muhammad. Therefore, they do not follow the religion of earlier prophet. Here we go. Just because you don't accept Muhammad, you are not a Christian no more. Because those religions come from Allah, but because they're sweet, their desire and lust. Therefore, they claimed of faith is an earlier prophet will not benefit them because they disbelieved in the master of all the prophet. <laughs> you see it? So now, this is the reason we should fight them because they don't believe in Muhammad. There's no war. They do not attack us. We do not attack them. It's simply they are not accepting Muhammad to be a prophet, as you see. The volume is too loud. Sorry for that. Um, I'll, I will keep the mic a little bit uh, far, far, far away from me. Is it better now? Now. Fight against those who believe Allah, they believe not in Allah, etc. So the reason, none of those reasons, and fighting those people who don't believe in Allah, is because they are fighting you, just because they don't accept Muhammad as a prophet, and the interpretation is in front of us so clear. You can freeze the video, and take your time to read it, and have fun. They are fighting the Christians, not because they are fighting Muhammad, but because they refuse to accept him as a prophet. So now we fight them, and as an excuse, by the way, this is an excuse as we showed you, because in verse number 28, it says clearly why. Because if you fear the poverty, because now you, as a fascist who refuse non-Muslim to enter the Kaaba and Mecca, 
and Medina, then we have to find a solution for you to make money. So what is that? Attack the Christians, take their money, and force them to pages here. So here, he continues saying, so fight those who don't believe, etc. in last day, all right? This, this honorable ayah was revealed with the order to fight the people of the book. After pagan were defeated, this is so. This is something separated. Muhammad now he been victorious over his own tribe Quraysh, who they are pagan. So now it is the turn for the Christians one by one. We will kill you one by one. So the people entered Allah religion large number. So now Muhammad he had more fighters because he forced people to convert to Islam, and the Arabian Peninsula was secured under Muslims control. So Allah now commanded his messenger to fight the people of the scriptures. You see, it's not the Christians were commanded to fight the Muslims, as the Muslim tried to say to us, you are taking it out of context. Here we go, Muhammad now is secure, Arabian Peninsula is under his control, and now he have a lot of army, and now he need to feed them. The verse before says, if you fear poverty, Allah will, will enrich you. How? We attack the neighbors and we steal their money. Or they have to pay us jizya. Either way is going to provide us with a lot of money. So here you see. Uh, 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 so uh, the, the, uh, Allah commands His Messenger. Allah commands His Messenger to fight the people, uh, the Scriptures, the Jews, and the Christians on the ninth years of Hijrah, and He prepared His army to fight the Roman. You see, it's not the Roman who prepared their army to fight Muhammad. It was Muhammad who been receiving an order from his God, as he claimed, to fight the Roman. So he called the people for jihad. It's not the Roman who came to Mecca to fight Muhammad. So the Muslims, they went all the way to the Roman site in Tabuk. And they made the camp there for 20 days. And then anyway, the the the, uh, the order of Allah did not, this is an additional proof by the way that Muhammad is a false prophet. Because Allah, he told Muhammad, go and you will be victorious and you will, you will conquer the Roman. They went there and they sat there for 20 days and they came back to Medina without accomplishing anything because they could not make it. So as you see here, in the interpretation of the Muslims, there's no Roman attacking the, the Muslims. There's no Roman sending letter to Muhammad says, convert to Christianity or we will kill you. It's not the Roman who did announce jihad. It's not them who came to Medina or to, to Mecca. The, the Roman never entered Saudi Arabia. Tabuk is always part of Jordan. And now it exists part as, as, a, as a line of borders between Saudi Arabia and Jordan. So... When the Muslims, they say, we are taking things out of context is an absolute pure lie. Then let us continue. We don't want to stop here because we might still did not give you the enough pre proofs and reasons. So then here, he says, paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. The Muslims, they lie to us. They say that jizya is just a tax. That's absolute false. Because if jizya is tax, why it's a sign of kufr and disgrace? Jizya in Arabic is a word mean penalty. So, paying jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace. What does that mean exactly? Allah said, until they pay the jizya. So you fight them until they pay you. The Muslim, they say to you, we force Christians to pay jizya because we don't, uh, you know, we protect them. But protect them from who? From us. <laughs> you know, we protect them from being killed from us. You see how filthy this excuse is? It's like the gang in Sicily, the mafia in Sicily, in Italy, in the old days. So if you don't choose, actually, by the way, for those who do not know, the 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 uh, the island of Sicily, the mafia, is started because of the Muslims' occupation. They learned that from the Muslims. When the Muslims start forcing Jizya, those filthy, trashy people in that uh, some some filthy families, they decide to practice Jizya even after they kick the Muslims out from there. Still, they want to practice the jizya because it was a very successful business. You sit home every first of, of the month, you go around and you ask people for money to pay you, to protect you. And this is how the mafia started. It was started from the chapter 9, verse number 29. Even the Italian mafia is coming from the Quran. 
So if they choose not to embrace Islam, so what we do for them? We force them to pay jizya. And it's a sign of kufr and disgrace. And feel themselves subdued, disgraced, humiliated, etc. And he continues saying, therefore the Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhamma. So they say to you, why ISIS are treating Christians bad and Yazidi? Look what the Quran is saying. Look, this is the Quran. Muslims, they have to humiliate you if you are not a Muslim. Not only they have to suck your blood and steal your money, it is the duty of a Muslim to insult you, to humiliate you, to spit in your face. So this is why, therefore, therefore, read with me. <coughs> Let me scroll up. Hmm? Therefore, uh, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of the Dhamma. Why? Somebody is a Christian. Why do you want to honor him? What's the problem? Because he's a Christian. You see, you're not more in him now. He's even paying you the jizya. It's not enough. The Muslims, they say, uh, jizya is tax. No, no, no. You cannot even honor him. You have to humiliate him or elevate them above the Muslims. For they are miserable, disgraced, humiliated. And look what Muhammad, he said, the, the prophet of peace. He said, read what the prophet says. The prophet is the best example. The prophet is the amazing man. Don't initiate salam to the Christians and the Jews. And if you meet any of them in the road, force them to the most narrow alley. So not only, not only Muhammad, is encouraging Muslim to be an enemy to each other. He is encouraging the Muslim to humiliate the Christians. And when they see you in the street, they force you to walk in the narrowest alley. What does that mean? In the old days, there was an open sewage, a little canal in the side of the way, the walkway. So when a Christian come in and a, and a Muslim come in, the Christian, he have to jump automatically in the sewage. And he he should act like a pig, like a, like a dog. The Muslim had a duty to humiliate him. So a Muslim, when he see a Christian in the road, he have to bother him. He have to hurt him. But yet they say to us, Islam is a religion of peace. And Muhammad was a great man. He was very good to the Christians. He was marrying a Christian woman. That's what they say to you. The fact he did not marry Christian women, he raped them. Mary the Copt, she was not married to him. She was his sex slave. Sophia was kidnapped from her husband after he killed her husband. And then they quote for you the conditions what Umar al-Khattab he made and the Christians when he attacked Jerusalem. Uh, right now we see that we have a problem in Al-Aqsa between the Jews and the, and the Muslims. And the fact, the, the, the history in front of you, it was Umar al-Khattab who sent his army so, you know, and surround Jerusalem and he forced people there to surrender and they are in occupation. It's not the Jews who are the occupation for Jerusalem, it is the Muslims. Until that day, as we see in front of us in the text, there was not a single Arab in Jerusalem. And nobody speak Arabic. All those countries you see in the map today speak in Arabic, they don't speak Arabic. Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Israel, Jordan, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, they don't speak Arabic. So what happened? The filthy army of Muhammad is scattered everywhere and they force wherever they go, they force Arabic language. So they say to you, don't take things out of context, but the fact they are the one who do so. And they are the one who try to fool you with their propaganda. Muhammad, he said it clearly, you know, if I was victorious, I'm going to excel, expel the Christians and the Jews from the Arabian Peninsula. Why, Muhammad, you want to expel the Christians and the Jews from the Arabian Peninsula? Is that because you are a peaceful prophet? So when ISIS, they give 24-hour warning for anyone in, in a certain town to leave, this is what Muhammad did. And then they come and they slaughter everybody. Either you convert or run before we come to you. Expel you. You know, the Muslims always speak about fascism, about the, the, the slavery. Islam is religion of slavery. Islam is religion of fascism. Islam is religion of genocide. 
And this is why you see zero Christian in Saudi Arabia. All those who live in Saudi Arabia right now, they are not citizens. If they are not non-Muslims. Only Muslim can be a citizen in Saudi Arabia. And that was the scenario for all those countries from, from for uh, 1400 years. <coughs> but yet they try to fool us and speak about good and bad. Uh, when the Muslim they, sp they, they speak as an example of uh, uh, like a crucifixion, they say ISIS, they torture people. Well, Muhammad, he tortured people too. In chapter 5, verse number 33, there's a story of supposedly people who converted to Islam and then they killed the shepherd and they ran away with some camels. Okay, let us say those people are guilty. Uh, what Muhammad did with those people, read with me. He chased them, he brought them, and he cut off their hands and feet and gogged their eyes. Do you see it? That is what ISIS do. They hang people in the cross and they gag their eyes and they cut their feet and their hands. This is exactly what they do. And they take selfie with them. So why they say ISIS is not Islam and ISIS are not Muslims? That guy in the video, he said, that ISIS, the prophet, he prophesied about them, that they are young, passionate people who don't follow Islam, but they are going to kill even Muslims. But the fact, Muhammad, the false prophet, he did not say what this guy is saying. He was speaking about those bad people who will come from Khorasan. And Khorasan is not Iraq. Khorasan is not Iraq. Look what Muhammad, he prophesied. They keep saying to you that ISIS, the prophesied by Muhammad about them. Three will fight one another for your treasure. Each one of them is a son of Caliph. None of those is a son of Caliph. <laughs> but none of them will gain, will gain in it. Then the black banners will come from the east. Is Iraq in the east of Saudi Arabia? Are you stupid? The east of Saudi Arabia is India. So this is again, if this is Muhammad speaking about ISIS, that means he's a false prophet again. And in different hadith, Muhammad, he mentioned that this is coming from Khorasan. Here we go. Black standard or banners or flags will come from Khorasan. Now, what Khorasan have to do with Iraq? And then they will enter Jerusalem. I mean, the Muslims, they try to fool you because they assume that you are ignorant. You do not know much about Islam. So let us fool those non-Muslims who know nothing and they don't speak Arabic. So we can get, you know, we, we can get into their head. And Muhammad crimes is all over. As an example here, when Muhammad, when Bani Quraidah, they surrender to Muhammad. Muhammad, he surrendered them uh, for, for more than 22 days or 25 days, as some story says. Then those people, they agree to put down their weapon and they are in their houses. It's not, it's not them attacking Muhammad. It's Muhammad attacking their, 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 their towns. So they surrender. Muhammad, he promised them to be just with them. What he did, he slaughtered them all after they surrender. surrender. So ISIS, when they, when they slaughter a prisoner, that is very Islamic because Quran, actually there's a verse in the Quran says, uh, let us see if we go in the Quran. <coughs> Let's show you, just to show you the verse. <coughs> Switch to Arabic. It's not for a prophet. It's not appropriate for a prophet to have a prisoners of war. So what does that mean? Kill them all. This is why you see, if you go and watch the videos of ISIS, uh, uh, the Muslim who sponsor them, they say, take no prisoners. Why? Because this verse in the Quran says so. Take not prisoners. 
it's not fitting for the prophet that he should have a prisoners of war until what until you cut every head around you you see it they say to you that ISIS when they kill prisoners of war they are not practicing Islam It's not for any prophet to have captives and he has made a slaughter in the land. <laughs> a person, you see in the in the video, the guy who you sent me the video, he says that if somebody in the battle, he asks you for asylum, you give him asylum. Read with me. It's not appropriate for a prophet to take anyone captive. Slaughter them all. So what the captive they take then the Muslim, they take the women, the children. The children they make them as sex slaves and they force them to convert to Islam. If you go and see the story of Bani Quraida, you will see <coughs> here a story of a woman she was laughing from pain because Muhammad is slaughtering her families, her tribe in the front of her eyes. Just because she was laughing, they cut her head. And the one is reporting the story is Aisha. So this woman she was laughing, look what it says while the messenger was killing her people. Huh? There was a woman, no woman of Bani Quraiza was killed. They took them as sex slaves, except she was with me. Who's talking Aisha? Talking and laughing in her back and Billy, which means this woman, she lost her mind of what she is seeing. Very ugly, disgusting scene. Her family are being slaughtered in front of her eyes. Extremely, while the messengers of Allah was killing her people. Why the, the the prophet of God, who is very peaceful, he is slaughtering people. They surrender. They are not fighting no more. They are captive of war. Because the Quran says, "Take no prisoners." Until you slaughter a, a, enough people to to convince them that you better convert to Islam. So slaughtering was a method of terror. This story here about a, a tribe is called Bani Mustaliq. Those they never fought Muhammad, they have no problem with Muhammad. Look what Muhammad did to him. Those people they are peacefully living in their own land. Muhammad, he was watching them from far away and he waited until their men they were watering their animals and then he attacked them and he enslaved all the women and he called he killed all the men and he took one of the women, her name is Juria. Actually, I know a woman, she left Islam because of the story of Juria. Because in this story, it shows how evil Muhammad is. So Muhammad, he take all the children are captives, but he killed all the men. Some stories, they said that he uh, let some of the men to live as, as slaves. But those people are not fighting him. We can show you tons of his stories. Here you will see how Muhammad he killed children. I heard, uh, etc. Uh, the story here saying that during the war in uh, against uh, Khoraiza, when Muhammad he was victorious over them, they lined up all the children. So those who have pubic hair had grown were killed. What does that mean? It means someone he is nine years old. He have little pubic hair around his private part. He should be killed. And the Muslim, they say to us, the Prophet, the rule of war, don't kill children. So we showed you Muhammad in the hadith before killing killing women. And here we show you killing killing kids because a pubic hair of, a, of somebody he is under the age of 10 is doesn't make him an adult. Still, he was killed. So when the Muslims speak about taking things about off of context, this is absolutely false statement. What about Muhammad? What about ISIS burning people? Look what Muhammad he says. There's a group of people they are not coming to pray. So Muhammad he said, I swear by Allah, if they don't come to pray, I'm going to take wood, put them in the top of their houses, and burn them alive in their houses. And the reason for that, just because they did not attend the prayer, that's all. They are not kuffar, they are not going in war with him. So for just not coming to pray, huh? 
it's enough reason for Muhammad to burn you and your family alive in your house what about somebody fighting Isis a Muslim he did not come to the mosque he's praying at his home so if you pray at home still Allah Muhammad Allah Prophet he will burn you alive in your house so when they say to you Islam is not Isis you should make a challenge for them says name for me one thing Isis did Muhammad did not do all right I hope you guys uh, actually there's a story about uh, uh, when Muhammad he, he attacked the Jews he took the woman her name is Sophia he raped her let me show you the story here it's in Arabic but it's okay <coughs> uh, this book is this reference exists in many books but right now I'm reading the book of Zad al-Ma'ad uh, and this is a very Islamic website all right uh, and this is uh, page number 290 and 291 so when well, Muhammad he uh, he attacked those people in their tribe and he took Safiya and Safiya she was a young bride so she just have uh, or get married young beautiful girl who got married all right uh, so the the the, uh, the prophet of Allah he took Safiya as a captive and he took with her her cousin and Safiya, she was under the guy, his name is Kunana, which means she was married to a guy, his name is Kunana. And she was newly married. Uh, so the Prophet, he ordered Bilal to bring her by his uh, camel or his donkey, whatever it is. And then he went and he walked with her between the dead ones. And then uh, Allah Prophet, he said to him, oh, you are walking her between the dead, come on, have mercy on her. Those are her family. See how nice Muhammad is? Then according to the story, Muhammad, uh, later he uh, in, uh, like to free her from slavery, but the fact she cannot go anywhere, she became his wife anyway, and anyway, where can she can go? But look what it says here. When Muhammad, he took her from her family after he killed her family and her tribe, uh, he took her to one of his tent. وَلَمَّا بَنَا بِهَا بَاتَ أَبُوْ أَيُّوْبْ لَيْلَتَهُ قَائِمًا قَرِيبًا مِنْ قُبَّتِهِ So when Muhammad, he did have sex with her, he raped her, the same night, look what happened, a guy, his name is Abu Ayyub. He slept next to Muhammad tent. And he, uh, not in a tent, he stand next to Muhammad tent and he was standing with his sword until the morning. In the morning, the Prophet, he came out and he said uh, to Abu Ayyub, what are you doing here? What's wrong? He said, well, I was really worried uh, all my night, Prophet, because you enter upon this woman, which means to have sex with her, to rape her, but you are the one who killed her father, her brother, her husband, and the total number of her tribe. So I was afraid she will assassinate you. So the Prophet, he laughed. And again, this is the reference in the front of us. I'm using a very Islamic website, not my website. This is the book of Zad al-Ma'ad, the book of As-Sira al nabawiyah And the book is written by a very well-known Islamic scholar, his name Abu al-Qayyim ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyah. Al-Imam Shams al-Din Abi Abdullah ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyah, very well-known, big scholar. And this is page number 290 to 91. So when the Muslim, they say to us, you are taking things of context. I mean, this is very silly and very stupid. But I understand they assume that all of you are a bunch of ignorant and you do not know Arabic. So anyway, you will not know. So always take notes and don't be a fool. And this is why we encourage people to download my videos. And you know, as you know, uh, I don't do my videos for my own. I, I make them for the sake of everybody. So feel free to download my videos 
and I have no problem for people downloading my videos, put them in their website. Don't just don't claim they are yours, and don't claim to be a Christian Prince and don't do editing. And please don't forget to mention the link which people they can contact me, which is betteryon.com underneath of the video, if they like to contact me. If you have any question, if you have any uh, topic you like me to answer, if I did not talk about it yet, let me know, and I will be happy to answer it. And if you like to invite me to your church or to your organization to make a seminar, feel free to contact me too. All right? With this, I want to say thank you very much. May the Lord bless you and keep you in good health and wealth. And this is a Christian prince who was speaking to you about the cult and the faith of Islam. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And only idiots cannot see that. So don't be one. Don't be one of those idiots. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you like to read more, you can go and search in Amazon for a Christian prince as an author, and you will find the list of my books all over Amazon. God bless, and thank you very, very much. Bye-bye.